This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. And what I'm looking at today is 2024's Festival of the Living Dead, directed by Jen Soka and Sylvia Soka. While there have been zombie movies before George Romero's 1968 classic, Night of the Living Dead, no other single director has done so much to elevate the subgenre. Part horror movie, part political statement, Romero's zombie movies have always managed to be about more than dead people trying to devour the living. Though when he was at the peak of his powers, viewers had to look a little bit deeper to see the message that he was trying to tell. For instance, that the dead seem to be attracted to a shopping mall in 1978's Dawn of the Dead isn't an accident and is a commentary on consumerism that even when dead, people are driven to the places where they purchase stuff. It is a zombie movie, but once again, it's saying more than traditional zombie movies do. And that was, for me, Romero's strong suit. He managed to make his political statements fairly subtle and not at all obvious. But if you watch it enough, I think it becomes fairly apparent. Now, I mentioned George Romero and Night of the Living Dead because Festival of the Dead seems to exist in the same universe as Romero's movie. And apparently is a celebration, an annual celebration no less, of victory over The Walking Dead. This information is relayed in the opening of the movie, which flashes scenes from Romero's movie with other happenings that are going on. It's not done as well as I would like, but it does get across the notion quite well that Festival of the Dead exists in the same universe as Night of the Living Dead. And that is awesome. Just the idea of it is awesome because it makes Festival of the Dead, in a sense, a continuation of the Night of the Living Dead story. So it's setting you up for something really cool. Too bad the movie doesn't live up to all that potential. The story revolves on Iris, who's babysitting her brother Luke with her best friend Ash. Iris's boyfriend and his entourage soon arrive at Iris's home. Remember who anyone is other than Ty, because he brings a certain intensity to his role, but on a whole, Everyone is somewhat forgettable, which is kind of a pity, because that speaks to characterization and writing, and this movie kind of stumbles in both of those areas. In any case, Ash decides to stay and babysit Iris' brother, allowing her to go to the Festival of the Dead. A little later on, Ash's friend, E-Boy, comes over. Iris. Her boyfriend and his entourage go to the Festival of the Dead, where the dead rise and try to kill everyone at the festival. How this started, I'm not entirely sure, though the movie makes a point of showing a meteor that crashed nearby. The point of that, I have no idea, because if you've seen Romero's dead movies, particularly the better ones, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead. He never tells you why it's happening. It just happens. And since supposedly Festival of the Dead is based upon the ideas based in Romero's movies, what is the point of this meteor? It's actually confusing because it doesn't seem to be doing anything. It's there, the camera focuses on it at points, but it never tells us why it's there. I assume because it brought the dead back to life. But it makes no sense. The festival isn't being held on a burial ground. And there is no graveyard shown in the movie. So where are all these bodies coming from that are the walking dead? It doesn't make any sense, and it's frustrating, once again, because of that opening I told you about earlier that establishes this movie as existing within the world of Romero's Night of the Living Dead. 
Festival of the Dead was directed by Jen Suska and Sylvia Suska, who directed American Mary in 2012, which I haven't seen, as well as the remake of David Cronenberg's Rabbit in 2019, which I have seen. It's not a great movie, though to be fair to the Suska sisters, David Cronenberg's original movie is also not that good. And in fact, I would argue that a lot of David Cronenberg's early movies aren't that good. The thing is, he was given a chance though, to improve his craft, and he got significantly better at it. Though Rabbit is not one of my favorite movies of his, and as I said, I don't think it's particularly good. The direction by the Suska sisters is fine. It's not great, but it's fine. Though the thing is, the cinematographer they chose to work with, Tony Misra, has no sense of atmosphere to speak of. The movie is, lighting-wise, fairly flat. There are no real shadows to speak of, which is to say even at night, people are very well lit. It's not badly lit. It's inappropriately lit, which is to say shadows and contrast build tension and provide atmosphere. The movie has virtually none of that. There should have been more instances of contrast in light and dark. That would have helped bring about a more creepy, otherworldly, suspenseful feel. And as I mentioned before, the acting is fine. It's not that the actors can't act. Everyone does well with the material that they have. It's that they just don't have a lot to work with. It's worth mentioning that every movie isn't The Searchers or The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance in terms of how they look. But at the same time, contrast and light and dark are what, by my reckoning, shooting in a movie is really all about. And if you remove those elements and give everything a uniform, flat appearance, you lose a certain atmosphere. Though it's even worse, by my reckoning, than the lighting issues are the fact that the movie is inconsistent, particularly in its treatment of the zombies. Many of the zombies are like George Romero type zombies, which is to say they lumber around, they're not terribly coordinated, but conversely, other zombies are like Zack Snyder zombies, which is to say they're climbing things and they're very coordinated. Two contrasts that don't work great together by my reckoning. And it's this contrast that carries forward to the rest of the movie that is particularly vexing for me. Initially, it promises to be, as I mentioned earlier, a spiritual sequel to George Romero's 1968 movie. But at the end of the day, it has no character development. It is fairly bland. It is not a very interesting movie. And that's not to say it's not watchable, because it is. It's just not really worth watching. So what do you think? This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com and Review. If you agree, disagree, let me know down below. And as usual, consider a like or a follow. Peace.